Amen. This is the also um, a blessing because we want to feed our spirit. And we want to feed our spirit to receive the more revelation. It's never, you know, you can read the same scripture and you can get a different revelation of the scripture. Hallelujah. That's so. The word of God is just a, I mean, you can just enjoy and receive that word of God. And, and that word of God have a power in itself to bring the fulfillment. Amen. And, and you today may be searching for answers. And you can receive the answer today. God can speak through his word to you tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to open up in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done, continue to do for each of us and our lives. And Father, I speak blessings over your people, Lord God, your faithful people, those who are here tonight. Oh, God, bless them. Because of their faithfulness, Lord God. That you increase your people, Lord God. That you are multiplied. Them. Oh, Father, we thank you. And those who is watching this broadcast, we thank you, Lord God. Many of them are faithful to watch your word, Lord God. And so, Father, you are bless your people, Lord God. Bless their faithfulness. Because you said in your word that you are willing and obedient. So, and so, Father, they are willing and they are obedient, Lord God, because they want to follow you, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that you will reward your people and they will eat the good of the land, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your people's eyes of understanding has been enlightened and they will know the truth and they will walk on the truth and they will uh, speak the truth. They will not be agree with the lies of the devil, but they will be agree with the word of God and they will receive the word of God. And Father, the word of God will manifest in your people's lives. In Jesus' name, we cancel every argument in the spirit realm that come against your people. Father, we cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. And we release your will, we release your plan, and we proclaim and declare in authority in the name of Jesus. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in the name of Jesus. And your people will walk by faith and not by sight. They will not look at the circumstances. They will not be agree with the lies of the devil. But they will stay strong in your word, Lord God, unmovable in Jesus' name. They will be a soldiers for the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. They will not be defeated. They will not be deceived. They will walk in a victory for the Lord Jesus. Because, Lord, you give us a victory, Lord God. We will not be defeated in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you so much for who you are. You are faithful, God. And Lord, we are lifting to you, Lord God, in service tonight. We ask you, Lord God, with all of our hearts, speak to your people. Touch your people, Lord God. Let your people have ears to hear and a heart to receive what the Spirit of the Lord has been saying. Comfort those who need a comfort. And Father, encourage those who need encouraged. And Father, bring the healing and restoration in your people's lives. And we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, we have a Pastor Larry is here tonight. Faithful man of God. Continue to walk by faith. And we thank God for this mighty man of God. We thank you, Father, that you continue to keep him. That he continue to be a blessing and be a blessing to many. In Jesus' name. So he is here tonight. He will minister to us the word of the living God precious word of the living God. Amen. Amen. 
So get ready and receive what the Spirit of the Lord will say us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory. Look like I might be a little bit too loud right there. Amen. But uh, check it out on your system. For some reason, it's not coming up. Amen. Well, God is good. His mercies is everlasting. And his truth endure to all generation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, let me lift this down just a little bit right here. There we go. That's a little bit better. And so now, let's pray one more time. Father, we come to you now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for this time together. We thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place right now. We invite you in right now. You are welcome in this place. We welcome you in this place, Lord Jesus. And Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you because we know that all things work together for good to them that love you, Father and to those who are called according to your purpose. And so, Father, we come to you knowing that you are God and that there's none like you. And so we come to you with confidence, knowing that you are God. And, Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we bless you, and we glorify you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive, make my tongue, as I'm appearing of a ready writer, to write your word upon our hearts, and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we covenant with you now that we will give you glory, honor, and praise for what you're going to do in our lives. And we thank you for it now in the mighty and majestic name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. I tell you, we serve a good God, folks. We serve a good God. The God that we serve, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask for things according to the power that work within us. And I believe that we are in the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. So let's uh, come together today and let us experience the Word. Let us have an experience in the Word. And let the Word have an experience in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, glory. We've been talking about, on, on Tuesday night, um, recently, lately, we've been talking about walking. It's a, it's a, uh, Jesus, the Word of God is alive in you. The Word of God is alive. Amen. Amen. The Word of God is alive. So we're going to continue along that line tonight because we believe that the Word of God is alive and that the Word of God is alive in us. Amen. The word of God is alive in us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And so praise the Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, in dealing with this subject, we know that the word of God is alive, and we know that the word of God is powerful. Amen. We know that the Word of God is powerful, and we know that the Word of God is alive. And so we want to just uh, get into that tonight. Amen, amen, amen. All right, can you find that program on Facebook? I saw it. I don't see it. Amen. I'm coming. Huh? Okay. 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 And so, uh, as we uh, as we as we come together with this, we believe that God is going to speak to our hearts. Now, 
Now let's look at here. Let's look at here a few scriptures here because I believe this is what we really want. We want to see the hand of God. We want to see the spirit of God. We want to know that the power of God is available. Amen. The power of God is available. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 4. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 3. The last chapter of Matthew chapter 3. Amen. I would, you know, for some reason, this is just in my spirit to, to go at it from this angle today. And so we're just going to follow the leading of the Lord. Amen. Now notice what he says here in uh, chapter 3. And let's look at here in verse number 13. Chapter 3, verse number 13. And then came Jesus from Galilee of Judea unto John unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me. Jesus answered, answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus is it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, notice, notice this now, when Jesus was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heaven were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And the Spirit, and the voice, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I will please. Now, I, I, I want to take you from this standpoint because you see, Jesus, he had to walk in the power the same way God is expecting us to walk in power. And we have to understand that Jesus, before he went to John, he wasn't walking in the power as we're about to see. Amen. And he might have been, but the Bible don't say, it doesn't, it doesn't say it whether or not whether he was or not. And so we're going to we look at verse number 1, chapter 4, verse number 1. When Jesus was, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit in the will, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Notice how the tempter is coming to Jesus. Amen. And notice how he's confronting Jesus. Amen. Uh, if thou be the Son of God. Notice how he's addressing him. He just said, I know that you're the Son of God. I, he said, if thou be the Son of God. Amen. But look what it says in verse number 4. It says, but he answered him, but he answered and said unto he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Now I like that statement because see, we see that he was taking up, he, he was taking a stand here. We see that he was taking a stand, and that the word of God had first place in his life. Amen. In his heart. Jesus is taking a stand on the word. Amen. Remember where it said? The word of God is full of power. Jesus, he could have, he took a stand standing on the word. He was holding to what the word says. He didn't try to make up something to say. He didn't try to figure out something to say. Amen. But he held on to the word. And the word began to speak to him. Amen. The word began to speak to his heart. Amen. The word began to come alive. The word began to show the. It began to demonstrate the life source that within it. Amen. Notice what he said, verse number, verse number five again, verse number, uh, verse number four, five, verse number four. But he answered and said, "It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God." Hallelujah. Amen. So that showed me. That showed me. That showed me that the Word of God is has the ability to produce, to create, 
to bring forth everything that God would have us to understand concerning the Word. The Word of God has the ability to create, to bring forth, produce. Amen? To produce. Are you with me today? Hallelujah. Because when we look at this, we know that we are that we know that this is not something that uh, that we can just uh, take lightly because, see, we want the Word of God to work for us. We want the Word of God to work in our life. We want to experience God's miracle working power. We want to experience the life source of the Word, the life force of the Word. Amen. So we have to believe the Word. We have to believe the Word. Jesus believed it so much to the point that he spoke it, and what he spoke came to pass. And, and that's what God wants us to come to point. God wants us, God want us to come to this place, to this place, to this place in ministry, to this place in life, to this place in the word, where when we speak, that God will honor the word that is spoken. Amen. Hallelujah. That God will honor the word that is spoken. So we have to realize, we have to know, we got to understand that the word is alive. The word is alive. Amen. Notice what it says in verse number 5 of uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse number 5. Then the devil taking him up into a holy city and sitting him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, lest, and, and, in, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Notice how the devil, how the enemy was coming against him. Amen. Notice how the enemy was com is coming against him. He's not coming against, he's, he's not coming against the man. He's coming against the word that's inside of the man. Amen. He's coming against the word that's on the inside of the man. The word of God has the ability of God inside of it to create, to produce, to bring forth. Amen. The nature and the, and, the, and, and, and and all that God is, because the word of God, the word of God can it can it can create. It has the power to create. It can change your circumstances. The word of God, when you make a bold stand upon the word of God, the word of God can change your circumstances. It can cause your sickness to disappear. Amen. It can cause you to be, it can cause you to experience the life and the nature of God. It can cause you to understand. It can cause you to see yourself the way God sees you. Amen. How many of you want to be seen the way God sees you? We all want to be seen the way God sees us. Am I right? We want God to see us. Amen. We want God to see us in the light of his word. We want to be seen in the light of the word. Amen. In other words, we want the word to become alive on the inside of us. We want the word of God to come alive on the inside of us. We got to see it. We got to know that it's we got to know that it's there. We got to know that what God has said, that He's also able to bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. Okay, so now, 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 now look right here. Uh, verse number uh, let's read verse number six. Verse number six. And he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Amen. Let, let's, let, let me read that again. Verse number 6. And he said unto him, if thou, can, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for, he, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Verse number 7. And Jesus answered, Jesus said unto him, It is written. Notice how Jesus is maintaining his stand on the word. He could have said a whole lot of other things, but he studied holding on to what the word says. He said, It is written. Notice what he said? It is written. Then he added, Again. It is written. Again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. Verse number eight. Again, the devil taking him up into an exceeding high mountain and, sit, and showed him the kingdom of the world 
and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou would fall down and worship me. Amen. All these things will I give thee, if thou would fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now I like, and I like what verse number eleven, what verse eleven is going to say, and and verse number. Listen to this. And the, then the devil leaving him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Amen. Angels came and ministered to him. Amen. And and then then was Jesus hit. Now, now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into the prison, he departed into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he come and dwelt in Capernaum, which is which is upon the seacoast, and in the borders of Zebulun and Nephilim, that it might be fulfilled by the, that it might be fulfilled which the, which which was spoken of which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun, the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea, beyond Galilee, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile. I like verse number 16. And the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and uh, and to them which sit in the in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Amen. Light is sprung up. So when we begin to, when we allow the word of God to come alive on the inside of us, it began to, it began to create the life, the nature, the character of Almighty God on the inside of us. Amen. And it causes our and and and, 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 and let me tell you something. That's when your that's when your that's when your mind began to be regulated by the word of God. Because because it, it, to get to this point, that means you have you have spent time in the word. You have allowed the word to speak to minister, to cause you to, to see yourself in a total different way. When God sees you, he sees his son. He sees his daughter. And in his sons and in his daughter, he sees his word abiding in them. And when we abide in him and he abides in us, we can say what we will. We can say what he, and it shall be done unto us. Amen. God wants to show himself strong on behalf of his people. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we come to God, we must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God wants to do something right now in your life and he wants you to be uh, he wants you to be the first partaker of what he's doing. Amen. Because everything that God does, he don't do it to be uh, seen of men. He do it that God may be glorified. Hallelujah. That God may be glorified in us. All things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. We are the, the children of the Most High God. Amen. We are the children of the Most High God. And everything that we do, for, I, I, listen folk, is for, we, sh we should do it to the glory of God. We should do it to the glory of God. Now I want to, I'm going to go to another scripture here because you see, you see here, we're talking about when Jesus he was baptized, right? Now let's look at Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Because see, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start revealing now where he get his strength from, where he get that power from. Amen. Glory to God. Look at Acts chapter 2. And I want you to look at verse number. Uh, let's look at, let's look, look at verse number 38 first. We'll look at Acts chapter 2 first and then verse number 38. Because you see, the full, the full name had just been revealed in verse number 36. Amen. Let's go. Let's read verse number 38 and then 36, 38. Chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. Amen. Now notice what it says here, verse number 36. Therefore let us, therefore let all the house of the Israel know assuredly that God had made had made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, 
both Lord and Christ. Amen. Both Lord and Christ. Now, when they when they heard these, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Look at verse number 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Because see, your power, the power of God, the word of God doesn't come alive as long as you're living as the world lives. Notice, notice what's taking place right here. The word of God is saying right here in, in verse number 38. He's, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you, notice what he said, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sin. And, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, what he talking about, you have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. What is the gift of the Holy Ghost? The gift of the Holy Ghost is the power of God working in you to bring about the will of God in this earth. Amen. So notice what he said again, verse number 38. He said, Then Peter said unto them, Repent ye, Mr. Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, and many as, as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. So we see here that God is dealing with the heart of the people, amen, to, 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 to be reconciled to him, to turn away from sin. Because if you walk in sin, that creative word, even though it's available, you're going to miss out on the benefits of what this word can do in your life. Because, you see, this word is for those who have opened up their heart and say, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I, I, I've had, I, when it happened for me, I, I was like this. I, I, was, I was so caught up in, in my old lifestyle and, and I was weak. I couldn't do it on my own. And one day I just went, I, I said, Lord, if you don't do it, this is all I have to offer. I don't want no more. I was about to end everything. Amen. But when God showed me that he loved me, even in the condition that I was in, he loved me enough that he saved me, he set me free right there on the spot. How did he do that? I had a change of heart. I asked him, Lord, I don't want to live like this no more. Lord, help me, save me, set me free. When I began to talk to God from a sincere heart, that's when God began to work on me. The power of God, the word of God began to come alive, folks. Begin to come alive. How did the word of God come alive? It's when I begin to acknowledge my need for God. That's when the word of God began to come alive for me. Amen. I don't know what it's going to take for you for the word of God to come alive for you. Maybe it's probably going to take the same thing. You got to begin to acknowledge what you need. Amen. This is this is on Christ Jesus. Amen. In, in Acts chapter nineteen, verse number four, when they heard this, they they were baptized. Amen. Look at Acts nineteen. My wish just look at it and read it. Amen. Because you see, it's time for us to get real with God. Not only get real with God, it's time for us to get real with ourselves. Get real with ourselves. Amen. Amen. Look at verse number uh, Acts chapter 19. Glory to God. And verse number 4 says, Are, are you there? Acts 19, verse 4. Then, then said Paul, then said Paul, John truly, John verily baptized with water. John, true glory to God. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that, that they should believe on him. Who they were talking about? They're talking about Jesus. Believe on him. Which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. So when we begin to believe on Christ Jesus, that's when we're going to experience the word of God coming alive. When start, look at verse number five. When they, when they heard this, they were, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized in the name of, of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul, when Paul had laid his hands upon them, 
the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Amen. And all the men were about 12. Well, about 12. Amen. So we see here that they received the power, amen, because the word of God began to transform them. The word of God began to bring them into a new into a new life. Amen. The word of God began to come alive on the inside of them. When? When they began to realize that their life was not productive. Because if you're living in, if, you, if your life is full of sin, then there's, there's no productivity in your life. You are, you're, you're actually hurting. You walk around full of pain. You try to figure out how to get yourself out of this situation. And there's only one way. Look at Acts of John chapter 14, verse number 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but by me. Amen. So Jesus already showed us the way to, to this new life, to, to, that the word of God can come alive on the inside of us. He already showed us that the word is alive. Amen. He said, I am the Lord. That is my name. And that's what it said in Isaiah 42 and verse 8. Amen. He said, that's my name. Amen. The Lord, the, the Lord who formed it <clears throat> in Jeremiah, look at Jeremiah 33 verse 2. Jeremiah 33 verse 2. Because I'm, I want you to understand, and I want you to see this because you see, if you could, if you could, if you can understand what God is saying to us, then we would have, we would, we would be a whole lot better off. Amen. We would be a whole lot better off because God is talking about, God is talking about you allowing the word of God come alive in you. And it's going to start the moment we begin to repent of our sin. The moment we begin to acknowledge our sin. Amen. Glory to God. And in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse number, verse number uh, one said, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus said the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name, called unto me. And I like this part, verse number three. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. See, when we allow the word of God to minister to us, when we allow the word of God to bring us to that lasting change, that inner change, amen, how that's going to happen is when we acknowledge, Father, I tried in my own strength. I tried in my own ability. I can't stop. I, every time I look around, I'm going right back doing the same thing over and over and over. Lord, I need help. God, I need help. I can't do it in my own strength. See, what am I doing? I'm, I'm acknowledging my need for God in my life. I'm acknowledging. Why? Why am I acknowledging? Because, you see, I'm tired of, I'm tired of failing. I'm tired of, feel, I'm tired of feeling like I can't, uh, I can't do it. Amen? Because that's not what the Word of God said. The Word of God said in 1 John 4, 4, it said, I can do all things through Christ who is strengthening me. I miss, I miss uh, the hour of God, little children, have overcome for greater he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. So if God is in me, and, and, and he said, greater he that is in me than he that is in the world, I know that I can do it. I know that I can do it. I know that I can do it. You can do it too. You can rise up. You can be strong. You can be an overcomer because the greater one lives on the inside of you. But you've got to allow that word to begin to minister to your heart. And how that's going to happen is when you begin to acknowledge, Lord, I can't do it by myself. I tried, you know, someone that's smoking and, and want to stop, and he keep buying, he buy a pack of cigarettes, and he and he smoke, he smoke one of the cigarettes. Then he get mad at himself. He throw the whole packet away, and then uh, about an hour or so, an hour later, he go back looking for him. Why? Because he don't have no power to stay away from him. Amen. He don't have no power to stay away from him, so he go back looking for him. And what happened then? He he he, he get mad at himself. And he begin, and the devil begin to bring condemnation upon you. Why? Because you see, he, the devil tried to get you to do it in your own strength, amen. And then he want to, he want to, he want to put his mouth on you to make you, to make you feel guilty, to make you think that you can't do it. That way, you'll stop trying. 
He wants you to just give up. He wants you to stop trying. Because he knows the moment that you give up and stop trying that he got you right where he wants you. And that's not God's best for you. God wants us to come to the reality of who we are according to the word of God. Amen. The word of God is alive, folks. The word of God is alive and it's very powerful. It has enough power that when we believe it, it has enough power to set us free from whatever the addiction that we're experiencing in our bodies and our lives. The word of God has the power to do that. But you got to believe the word of God. The word of God has got to come alive. It has to come alive on the inside of you. Hallelujah. It has to come alive on the inside of you. And it can. It can come alive on the inside of you. And all you got to do is just allow God to do what he want to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at uh, John chapter 3. And John chapter 3. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. And John chapter 3, we're reading here, and it says, in John chapter 3, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, that we know thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do the miracle that thou do it except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. You see, the word of God, you want the, you want you want peace in your life. You want you want the, uh to uh, you want to know that God is with you. Amen. But you don't want to you don't want to yield to him. You want all of that God has for you, but you don't want to yield to him. You want to try to figure it out in your own strength. You want to try to figure it out in your own ability. You want to try to stop what you're doing in your own in your own might. God said, it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. Amen. We can't stop it in our own strength. How many times you tried? How many times you tried to stop that bad habit that is holding you down? Amen. That is keeping you, that is keeping you uh, 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 under, under, beneath your privileges, beneath the promises that God has given you. How many times have you tried to stop this thing? Number of times, huh? Amen, I know it. But now listen to this. Listen to this. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and over scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And he said that nothing shall by enemies hurt you. God has given you the ability to, to take a stand against this, those addictions. And everything that is holding you back. You have God's ability in you to carry out that assignment. Hallelujah. You have God's ability in you to carry out that assignment. And when you begin to walk that assignment, when you begin to carry out that assignment, that's when the word of God is going to begin to come alive on the inside of you. Amen. Now let's look at John chapter, let's look at the uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at uh, uh, 1 John chapter 1 John chapter 1. Now notice what it says in verse number, verse number 7. 1 John chapter 1, verse number 7. It said, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, knows what it says? Cleanses us. Cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. Now, folks, when you are cleansed, when the word of God cleanses you, it brings you to a whole new level, a whole new level in your Christian walk. Amen. In your, in your life. Now, you are beginning to understand the transformation that is taking place. Because once the word of God begins to come alive on the inside of you, there's a transformation that's taking place on the inside of you. Look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Amen. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1 and 2. Romans 12. Amen. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, 
holy, acceptable to, uh, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. And perfect will of God. Amen. Now I want to take you to another scripture. Let's go back to John once again. Now this time we're going to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Because you see, the word of God is alive. And you must, you got to see this because you see, the word of God, it has everything that you need to bring you to that place of inner peace. It has everything that you need to get you to the point of deliverance. Amen. It has everything you need to bring you to that, to that new hope, to that new faith, and to that new walk in Christ Jesus. Amen. So let's get, let's get our hearts in this place. Let's know that we're not alone. Let us see ourselves walking in the word of God. Notice what it said in, 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 in John chapter, John chapter uh, 1. In John Gospel chapter 1. Because the word of God is alive, folks. It is alive. Amen. Look at chapter 1. It says, verse number 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Notice what it said, in him was life. So that showed me right there that the word of God is alive because he's talking about the word here. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Amen. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And remember, we just talked about the light over there in the cleansing over in, 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 uh, in 1 John. Amen. In 1 John. So we see that the word of God has the ability to create in us. To create in us the God kind of lifestyle. The nature of God. It, it will come alive when we begin to acknowledge our need for God. And as long as we are not concerned about our salvation, as long as we are not concerned about uh, how we are living our day-to-day -day life, as, as long as we are content uh, living a lukewarm state, God is going to stand back. And he's going to wait for you to call upon him. He's not going to push his way into your life. He's not, going to, he's not going to force you to accept the benefits that he has already provided for you. Amen. He's going to give you the opportunity. He's going to give you that chance. He's going to give you that choice because he gave each and every one of us the power to choose. We can choose life or we can choose death. We can choose blessings or we can choose curses. He's given all of us, each and every one of us, been given the, the power to choose. Amen. We've been given the power to choose. And so we look right here in verse number in verse number uh, 6, still in chapter 1, John chapter 1, verse number 6 says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. We were just reading about this over there just a minute ago in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in chapter 3. Amen. But notice what he said right in verse, in verse number 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which lighted every man that coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Amen. And the same, is it, he, he, and as many as received him, I like this part right here. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Hallelujah. And the word, verse number 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, the word came alive. The word came alive. God wants you to experience the life that is in the word. That addiction that you're dealing with, friend, that addiction, it doesn't matter what it is. The word of God has the power in it to deliver you from that addiction. Amen. Amen. 
And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just talking just to hear myself talk because you see, I know what I'm talking about because I've been there. And I know what God brought me from. Amen. And I know that God loves you just as much as he loved me when I was without Christ in my heart, saying that I was a Christian, but not living as a Christian, going to church, but going to the club afterwards. My wife said 30 years ago. It's been a little bit longer than 30 years ago. <laughs> it's been a little longer than 30 years ago. But the thing about it is that there are still people doing it today. There are still people living a lifestyle today, and they go to church, but they come out of church going right back to that old lifestyle. Why? Because they have not experienced the power of the living word. The power that can heal them, that can set them free. The power of the word that can de deliver them. The power in the word that can cause them to experience the life and the nature of God. And this is what we ultimately want, folks. To experience the life of God. The nature of God. The spirit of God. And it's going to happen the moment we begin to examine our life. Begin to examine our hearts. Begin to look at ourselves and begin to oh, realize that I can't do it in my own strength. I've tried time and time again. And I'm always falling back to that same old lifestyle. Because I can't do it in my own self. I can't do it in my own strength. And once you realize that, and you be just like that man in John chapter 3. How could a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter a second time to his mother's womb? And Jesus answered and said, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's time for us to see the kingdom of God manifesting in our lives, manifesting in our hearts through the Word of God. The Word of God is powerful enough to set you free. It's powerful enough to heal you of your disease. It's powerful enough to restore your relationship with your spouse. With your children. With your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we can, when we see that, when we see that, how that's going to happen? How that's going to happen? Glory to God. Now, let's go to Luke. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Amen. In Luke chapter 24, and I want us to look at verse number 49. Hallelujah. My God, this is this is this was nothing what I wanted to talk about tonight. But it's going in a good direction. Because I see what God is saying. And so notice, notice what it says right here in verse number uh verse number 49. He said, And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be what? And do with power from on high. And do with power from on high. Amen. Glory to God. And so God is God is showing us what he's expecting. He wants to tarry and wait. Because, see, you're about to step into your new beginning. Your new life is just a step away. Your new life is just a step away. It's time, you know, it's time out from walk around being weary, not understanding what God has wanted us to do. Amen. It's time to take that step of faith and just prepare ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. My God, the Holy Ghost is all over me up here. Hallelujah. Mm. But it's time to it's time to, to take that step of faith and begin to prepare ourselves. What do you mean begin to prepare ourselves? It's time for us to begin to examine our hearts. It's time to begin to examine our lives. It's time to begin to ask God for help. It's time to begin to not to lean to your own understanding. And, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. And let him begin to direct your path. You've been trying to make your path your own self. But God said, there's a way that seemed right to a man. But the end thereof is destruction. is death. You see... The ways of God is higher than our ways. 
His thoughts is higher than our thoughts. And he his, and his purpose and his plan for us is greater and bigger beyond our, our imagination. We can only, if we only had a glimpse of what God had planned for us, would we live the way we're living? Would we continue to do what we're doing? Or will we begin to seek God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, knowing that he's the only one that can make it happen? He's the only one that can cause you to be set free. For he that the Son set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting anything out of this today? Yes. Hallelujah. And so now let's look at the book of Acts once again. And look at the book of Acts once again, if you don't mind. And look at chapter 1. Look at the book of Acts in chapter 1. Amen. And the book of Acts in chapter 1, it reads... Here in, uh, and so I read verse number one. The former treaties have I made, of, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do, now notice what he said, and teach, to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after, after he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive, Notice what he said? He showed himself alive. How could he do that? Because the word of God is alive and the word of God was came and took up on flesh and Jesus was that flesh that the word came alive. Amen. Now notice what he says here, verse number three. To whom also he showed himself alive after this passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but notice what he said, but wait for the promise. We just talked about the promise over in the book of Acts, chapter four, chapter 24, amen, verse number 49, amen. So now he, we, 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 he reiterated right here in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse number 4. Verse number 4 says again, and being assembled together, with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. <clears throat> for John truly baptized with the Holy, but John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be what? Baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Amen. Not many days hence. And I, I like that because, you see, God is about to release. He's going to show the, he, he, the, the power <clears throat> that he has given is about to be made available to all men. Amen? To all men. Notice what it says right here. Notice what it says in verse number, verse number, verse number uh, 6 says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father had put in his own power, but you shall receive power. Verse number 8, but you shall receive power. Power for what? Power to live a, 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 and overcome a life. Power to live a, a life, a transformed life. Amen? Because we're not conformed to this world, but we're being transformed by the renewing of our mind. How are we going to be renewed by the renewing of our mind if we don't allow the Word of God to do it? Folks, we've tried it in our own self. we tried it time and time again. We never was able to accomplish that what we was trying to accomplish. Why? Because we can't do it. If we can't do it and God have already provided provision to make it happen, why not just trust the one that have already, that have already made it a way for you? Just trust him. Amen. He's already made a way for you. Notice what it said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power. He's talking about you. He's talking about me. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Glory to God. God is wanting you. God is trying to let you know that the word of God is full of life and is alive. The Word of God is alive and full of power. Power to deliver you from that addiction. Power to set you free from the, from the, from the uh, uh, 
trials of life that the enemy has brought in your brought upon you. God wants to bring you to a place where you can experience the peace of God that's a pass of all understanding that will keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so now as we see this, as we see this, we see that God, it, all of this was spoken right before he was taken up. All of this was spoken right before he was taken up into heaven. Let me read verse number 9. I'm going to show you here. Verse number 9 said, And when he had done, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. See, after he did, after he released, after he gave them commandment, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you. Immediately after that, he was taken up. He was taken up. Why? Because he had given them everything that they need to walk in a victorious, overcoming life. <coughs> He gave them the power to overcome the, 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 the powers of darkness. And he gave them the power to be delivered from their addiction. He gave them the power to be healed from that sickness and from that disease. Behold, I give unto you power. I give unto you power, glory to God. Isn't that what he said? Hallelujah. Now notice here in verse number, verse number 9, And when he, had, when he had spoken these things, while they behold, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which which, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Hallelujah. We, we see that God already showed us that we have a purpose and our purpose is not to be strung out on some kind of addiction that is keeping us from fulfilling our purpose. Amen. Xanax and Xantax and and, and, and all this thing that the devil getting you to take him, making you, uh, keep you uh, uh, from fulfilling the purpose and the plan that God has given you. Amen. It's time to start looking to God. It's time to start trusting him to deliver you and to get you off of these drugs, to get you off of these, 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 these things that's addicting you, that's causing you to be less than what God created you to be. It's time to get into that place, folks, where we can begin to experience the life and the nature of Almighty God. Look at chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And, and, and look what it says right here in verse number, verse number 1. You see, Jesus, see, Jesus uh, said, Jesus said he would, you would be able to, to do greater things. Amen. You'll be able to do greater things. And what is the greater thing that you need to accomplish in your life? The greatest thing that you need to be able to accomplish in your life is to be free from that addiction. To be free from them drugs, to be free from whatever that is that is keeping you back from fulfilling God's purpose. This is one of the main things that you need to be focused on being free from right now. Amen. Because the moment you're free from that, the moment you're free from that, that's the that's the point. That's your that's gonna be your turnaround point where you're gonna see the word of God coming alive in you. Amen. Fulfilling the will of God in you. Glory to God. And the purpose of God and the plans of God gonna begin to be unfolding to your understanding so you can see and know what is the hope of his calling and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the workings of his mighty power. Amen. Behold, I give unto you power, he says. Amen. I give unto you power. Hallelujah. To not, what are you giving you for? To shred over serpents and over scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Then he said like this. He said that nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says right here in Acts chapter 2, verse number 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly, amen, are you ready for that suddenly? Because you're about to have a sudden move of God in your life right now. You're about to have a sudden move of God in your life. Amen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongue like as a fire, and it set upon each of them, 
And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. As the Spirit gave them utterance. You see, the power of God, the power of God will cause you to speak a language that you didn't even go to school to learn. Amen. Because it's not a, a given language of the earth. It is a given language from heaven. It's God's language that he's given you. Why is he giving you this? Because he wants to establish a direct communication line with you. Yeah. Amen. Where you can call upon him anytime and you know that you'll get through to him. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know about you, but when, 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 I, when I got a hold of this, when I got a hold of this, my life was, my life was totally transformed. Amen. I remember when I used to, I, when I was uh, messed up, I, I was hearing voices, I was seeing things that wasn't there, hearing things that wasn't even being said. But when I got a hold to the Word of God, the Word of God delivered me from that demon spirit that was taunting me. And God want to do the same thing for you. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, folks. For God has given me the ability to preach deliverance to the captain, recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is your season. Yes. This is your time for deliverance. This is your day. Amen. This is your day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to take you now to the book of Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Amen. Because I'm, going, I'm getting ready, to do, I'm getting ready to, to do something here. Amen. In Luke chapter 11. And I want you to look with me and start reading with verse number 9. Luke chapter 11, verse number 9. Because you see, if you want this power, you want, this, you want, you want the living word, you want the word of God to come alive on the inside of you. You want the word of God to come alive on the inside of you. Now, before we go to this uh, chapter here, First, let's go to the book of Romans chapter 10 first. And then we'll come back over here to Luke. And then that's going to be our closing point. Amen. That's going to be our closing point when we come back over here to Luke. Amen. But right now, let's go to uh, Romans chapter Roman chapter 10. In the book of Romans chapter 10, I just got a, a few scriptures I want to read here. And then we're going to go back to, we're going to go back to uh, Luke. Amen. And then we're going to pray with you. In Romans chapter 10, look at verse number 1, it says, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer for God for Israel is that, that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. How many of you know that, 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 that they, they, they know about God, but they really don't know God? And this is what God is going to, this is what God wants to uh, uh, clear up in your life. He doesn't, he doesn't just want you to know about Him. He wants you to know Him. Amen. He doesn't want you to just know about him. He wants you to come to know him. How are you going to come to know him? By examining your heart right now. Amen. Examine your heart right now because you see, you tried and you did not succeed. I remember when I kept trying and I could not succeed. But the moment I gave it over to the Lord, my trying stopped trying and I became doing. See, I, 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 uh, James 1, 22 said, Be not a forgetful hearer of the word, but be ye doers of the word. I began to do the word. I began to hear, and I began to do what I heard. You know, what I hear from the word of God. In other words, the word of God began to come alive on the inside of me. And, it had, and, it, and, it, and when the word of God began to come alive on the inside of me, the word of God came alive it with power. And it began to drive out all those unwanted spirits. Somebody is going to be free today. Amen. Someone is going to be set free today. Because this word that I'm about to share with you. Amen. If you, if you just, just follow me and you accept this, you receive this. You are going to experience a new life that is in Christ Jesus. And it's going to begin to flow through you. Driving out every unclean spirit. Amen. That is taunting you. That is holding you back. Hallelujah. Notice what he said right here in Romans chapter 10, verse number, verse number 8 now. He said, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. And that is the word of faith which we preach. Verse number 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Amen. Notice what he said. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. 
and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Notice what he's saying here, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, in other words, you got to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You not only got to believe it, you got to say it with your mouth that you believe it. It's not something that you think, it's something that you got to acknowledge. Amen. You got to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And the moment you acknowledge that, it's, I'm telling you, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's just going to drop in your spirit. It's going to begin to. It's going to begin to just, just to come alive on the inside of your spirit. Your spirit is going to be regenerated. Hallelujah! The word of God that you receive is going to begin to regenerate your spirit. The word of God will come alive, and all of a sudden, you're going to begin to experience the new life that's in Christ Jesus. Notice what it says right here in Romans chapter ten, verse number nine. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is the way we have, this is the way we come to Christ, folks. This is the only way we come to Christ. Amen. And by accepting, by acknowledging him and accepting him, inviting him into our hearts. Amen. This is the way we do that. Amen. Look at verse number nine. I'm going to read it one more time. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, you got to confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. Then he said, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Verse number 10. Verse number 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, there go that the word confession again. Confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Confession is made unto salvation. So we're gonna we're gonna confess with our mouth. We're gonna believe in the heart. We're gonna confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And that when we confess with our mouth and believe in the heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, the Bible says in verse number 13, look what it says in verse number 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon him. See, that, that mark out the, the morning time. Well, he, that don't apply to me. He said, whosoever shall say. Whosoever. That does apply to you. Whosoever shall say to the, the that Jesus Christ is Lord shall be saved. Amen? That's what it says right here in verse number 13. It says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to every one of us. Amen? Now, I want, to, I want, you, to, I want you to just uh, to prepare to acknowledge that in just a minute. Amen? Now let's go back to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Let's go look at verse number 9. Luke chapter 11, verse number 9 said, that if thou see the word of God, the word of God is alive, folks. I'm telling you. The word of God is alive. If you if you follow, if you follow this, what I'm sharing with you today, if you follow this, the word of God is going to come alive in your spirit. The word, oh my God. The word of God is going to come alive in your spirit. Hallelujah. Notice what it says right here. Glory to God. And, and verse number 9. And I say unto you, ask. Notice what it said, verse number 9. He said, I say unto you, ask. I say unto you, ask. Amen. Now notice what it said. Ask, right here in Luke chapter, Luke chapter, chapter 9, chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse number 9. And I say unto you, ask. And it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Verse number 10. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Verse number 11. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father... Will he give him a stone? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Verse number 13. If ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. See that word evil, that means a natural, natural person. A person without God in his life. You know, you love your child. You want, you still want, you you want to do good by your child. Amen. Now, note that's just that's you talk about a natural person. But now, now, note now, notice this now. 
if ye then being evil know how to do good for your uh, give uh, give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Amen. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to ask God. Not only we're we going to ask God for salvation today, but we're going to ask God for the the baptism in the Holy Spirit today. Amen. Look at let's go. Can we go back to Luke, Mister, to Acts, chapter two, verse thirty-eight, one, one more time. Acts chapter what's up? two and verse thirty-eight, and then we're gonna pray. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. There we go. Hallelujah. He said, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Father, I know that you're dealing with hearts all across the list, the listening audience and here in the sanctuary as well. And I'm asking your Father right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, you gave me this message today. This is not something that I had planned, but this is what you planned. Because God, you knew who was going to be listening to us today. You knew the hearts of the people that you want to touch today. You knew those that need deliverance today. You knew those that want to be set free today. And Father, you brought them across our path. And now, Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, let every demonic force that is working against the heart of those under the sound of my voice be still right now. I bind that demonic force Right now, that it will not be able to speak to their hearts or their minds. Right now, I bind up that demonic force. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over their ears. I plead the blood of Jesus over their hearts and over their minds. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I ask you that you will speak to their hearts. And God, I give you glory and praise right now for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, that demonic force that will try to interfere with you has already been bound. I have bound him in the spirit realm. I know that he's bound. The word of God said, whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. I know that the demonic force that is messing with your mind has been bound right now. Now you have the perfect opportunity to acknowledge your, your heart. Acknowledging your heart, your need for Christ. Right now, I want you to just examine your own life. Examine your life. And I want you to see your need for Christ. Amen. Examine your life right now. Just, just, just close your eyes for, for, for about 30 seconds and just look at your life and see in your heart, is this where you want to be? Is this where you're supposed to be? And if it's not, then I'm, when we come back, I want you to make it right with God. Check, let God right now, go ahead and examine your heart and, and we're going to come right back. We're going to pray with you because I believe that you're about to enter into a life-changing experience with Almighty God. And you know what? I'm going to enter right in there with you. I'm going to enter into that change right with you. Amen. And I'm going to experience the same thing that you're going to experience. Because I'm telling you, the power of God is, is bearing down upon me right now. It's bearing down upon me right now. Amen. Go ahead and make your examine your heart right now. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Now, for those of you that just examine your heart, I want you to put your hand on your heart right now. Just lay your hand on your heart and say this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sin and I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. 
Jesus, come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. I receive you now as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And if you said that prayer with me right now, friend, let me tell you something. Things is changing. Things is changing. Now, I'm going to say another prayer right now. I want you to lay your hand upon your forehead right now. In the name of Jesus, lay your hand upon your forehead. Now say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I need more power in my life to live the life that you've given me. Baptize me now in the Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus, I receive right now the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. I receive it now. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, God has touched you right now. Some of you right now, you were just born again. Some of you just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost right now. Just begin to speak in your heavenly lane. Begin to speak in your heavenly lane. Oh, rabasata, rabasata, rabaki. Oh, Randy. oh, I see change being, I see change being lifted. I see burdens being lifted. I see yoke being destroyed. And I see people being set free all across the listening audience. People being set free right now all across the listening audience. Father, I thank you for it. I praise you for it. I give you glory for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit of lust. Come out right now in Jesus' name. I bind that spirit of perversion. I rebuke you. Come out now in Jesus' name. I come against that, that de demonic force that is... That is, that is holding the people from moving on into the things of God. I command you to leave that person right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that your word will not return void, but your word will accomplish the things that pleases you. Father, I give you praise. I come against that tormenting spirit. I come against that familiar spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I bind up that familiar spirit. I bind it up right now in the spiritual realm in Jesus' name. Now I command you to cease your activity. Stop right now. Come out of that person in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you. I praise you. And I glorify you for it, Father. And I, Lord God, I know that all things work together for good to them that love you and to those who are called according to your purpose. Father, I give you glory. I give you honor. And I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. I believe that God has set some people free today. He that the Son set free is free indeed. Glory to God. Glory to God. I believe that you are set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, Father, we just worship you. We thank you. We praise you and we glorify you. Lord God, your word, hallelujah, your word is alive. Your word is health and healing to all our flesh, God. Thank you so much, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. And he is health and healing to all our flesh. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Praise 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 you. Just worship him. Just praise him for a minute. Praise you, Lord God. We worship you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, glory to God. My time is up. Mm, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and prepare our offering for the day. Amen. Go ahead and prepare our offering for the day. And ask the Lord would have you to give, give, knowing that God is going to give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. Will men give back into your bosom? Amen. Because we know that God blesses those that delight themselves in his word. He said, give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give into our bosom? Hallelujah. And so we believe that we are in the right place at the right time. And God is being glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So go ahead. Everybody got the offering together? Okay. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over this offering. If those of you are going to be given by the internet, go to my website, labbergerministries.com. Use your ATM card, your credit card, so you'll see, believe in God. And I'm going to release my faith and believe God with you for your breakthrough. Those are going to be sending through the mail. That's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. God bless you and as you give. Father, we pray for those that are giving right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father, Lord, that you are touched, that you minister to the people, Lord God, like never before. I thank you, Father, for the salvation of many that will hear this message, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that they will realize how strongly that this word is and how much alive it is on the inside of us. Father, I thank you for deliverance. I thank you, Father, for healing. I thank you, Father, for setting your people free through this word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you glory. I give you praise for it right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Those that you've given, go ahead and give right now. Amen. So if you're here today, you want me, you want me to pray for you, let me go ahead and pray for you. Come on, let me pray for you, sister. Lisa. You understand this, don't you? Lisa. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear sister. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continue to rest upon her. I thank you, Father, that she continue to walk in divine health and healing. I thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against her will prosper. And now, Lord, I give you glory, honor, and praise for it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for those that are with us by the internet. I pray for those that are with us by the internet right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that your hand rests upon these people. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against them in judgment, Father, is condemned already. I release my faith, Father, on the behalf of those that are with us by the internet, Father, that they, too, will come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord. And, Father, I thank you, I praise you, I give you glory for what you're doing in their life. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you again on next time. Amen. Bye-bye.